Sure, sure, yeah. Um, so uh, I guess my my path started when I was, I guess, eight, 19 or 20, I think I was, 8, 19 or 20. Um, well, there was some of the cross a documentary on Netflix called 9-11 Lose Change, um, which I wouldn't necessarily agree with everything in there now, but nonetheless, it was you know really important in setting me on uh, you know the the path that, that that I'm on today. Uh, not long after, I, I you know I found uh, Bill Cooper, um, who did a, a radio show back in the '90s called Hour of the Time, and I uh, wrote a book called Behold a Hill, Behold a Pale Horse. And uh, yeah, I was I came across it when I was like 21. I was working at a, a moving company, so I just packed people's houses. I had headphones in. I just listened to Bill Cooper for like eight hours a day. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it was it was uh, yeah it was definitely definitely influential. And um, so yeah, I, I've listened to basically all 2,000 hours of his archives, uh, which I think are still up. I hope are, are still up. And um, yeah, I uh, eventually in 2015, um, you know, I was looking around, you know, looking around for radio and podcasts, and I really couldn't see anyone out there that was doing what Bill was doing. Um, you know, I guess, and I, I didn't see anyone that was out there, you know, um, you know, spreading the message of truth and freedom that he did. And um, then, uh, so it kind of started. He was a constitutionalist, so you know, more more kind of a minarchist. Um, and, uh, so I started the, con- the, started the, the podcast or the radio show in February of 2015, uh, kind of from that, that mindset. And, uh, then it wasn't, you know, much, it wasn't long after that I came across, you know, some, you know, some agoras and free market folks. And then, uh, yeah, I went down the Austrian economics rabbit hole and, um, for about six months and I read, you know, human action and, you know, went really deep into those paths. And then eventually I got to a point where it's like, I could, go, I could go into That's all the nuance and the details and learn about the Austrian business cycle theory. And, but like, as it's like at that point, I was like, okay, the free market's the way to do it. Um, coercion's wrong. Like, what are we going to do about it? And, and you know, in physical space and time. So very, very quickly early on in my radio path, I I switched over. We did um, in 2016. We started what uh, what I call the, the direct action series. And we went like it was like six months. It was a six month uh, live radio series where we you know just covered solutions in depth. And it wasn't obviously as organized or coherent as what I put out now. I think, but um, nonetheless, that was like the the bit my big my big first task was people would always always ask me like, well, well, so what do we do then? Like, if you have all the, if you have solutions, give us solutions. I was like, okay, here's like a hundred plus. Go have fun, and it was it was just the perfect thing, the, the perfect thing. So yeah, I guess uh, soon after that, I found Vanu, um, which is briefly briefly defined as uh, volunteer. Uh, I guess uh, it's an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable. And um, it's the it's basically becoming as invulnerable to coercion as humanly possible from the from public coercers, governments, and private coercers, just private individuals, you know, private viola- pri- private violators of person and property. Yeah, I stumbled across that book, and it was uh, it was huge. You know, Ray, Ray the guy he uh, the guy was us uh, went uh, by the pseudonym of Rayo. Essentially, yeah, he uh, this this random guy from the sixties the sixties, this very obscure guy who um, no one would know about him if it wasn't for one, you know crazy archive is kind of like me now, I guess back in the 70s, you know, 60s and 70s doing it, um, you know, archiving libertarian zines. But yeah, this guy was a, a radical freedom pioneer in the 60s. He, he saw the world a lot like we do today back in the 60s. Um, and so much so that he took radical lifestyle changes to escape the tyranny of the servile society. And uh, he started as a van nomad um, and, uh, and really saw the saw viability and, nomil- uh, and mobility. And we talked about, uh, you know, I guess uh, strategic relocation um, in, in our discussion um, well, he was, uh, I guess he was an engineer and he, he, he made a lot of his money. He made his money in the States and then went and I guess um, at times, you know, spent his money in, you know, Caribbean islands or, um, you know, Canada or somewhere else. So he, 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 he utilized multiple jurisdictions. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he was, he was, he was a van nomad. And then uh, he realized that that wasn't enough freedom for him. And uh, he decided to go live in a tent in the Siskiyou Forest, which is Northern California, Southern Oregon. So this guy was really, really radical back in the 60s. And I guess kind of set the trajectory of like the most radical path of, that you really can take as a new one, but obviously there's um, um, one of the mantras of Vanu is Vanu is yours for the making. Um, it's very it's very customizable. Really, as long as you're taking steps to make yourself more invulnerable to coercion, um, then you're a new one. Now, obviously, like it's a hard it's a hardcore philosophy. So, like um, I wouldn't just say like like it, it wouldn't just be like that generic. But you, you can kind of get what I'm saying. If people are taking active steps to increase their freedom or their vulnerability to coercion, then yeah, they're they're essentially a new one. Um, so yeah, um, I guess that's a, a brief overview of of Vanu, and uh, I guess to so yeah, that was in 2016 when we started that podcast. Yeah, I guess since then it's just been, um, it's it's. I guess there there are a couple other big things too. I went to Acapulco for uh, for a couple months and lived there. Then came out here and started started the homestead here in Southern Illinois. Um, so yeah, now I'm I'm out here, 22 acres with uh, chickens, turkeys, and ducks. We got lambs and goats. Uh, we just processed our rabbits, so we had rabbits up until a couple months ago. 
And uh, we've got you know big gardens, um, lots of stuff. So I mean, we're uh, it's uh, so it's this the start here for our node and the and the Pasnian network, the second round network that we're building. Um, and it's kind of uh, I don't know maybe the uh, um, you know maybe an example people can follow you know how to take a, how to take a home set off grid because we're going really into you know really deep topic you know really big topics too because second round was about rebuilding all of human society upon a foundation of peace, truth, and voluntarism. So like obviously health and wellness, um, you know food, uh, infrastructure. Um, all of these things are super important. They're part of the human experience, and we need to we need to have our own. But uh, yeah, yeah, we got to build no, our own for al- sure. our, our own alternatives for sure. 